Oh, lift your voice to the King tonight. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. We worship you, Jesus. Name above all names. Worthy of all of our praise tonight. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Woo! Philippians 2 and 5, let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Somebody shout the name Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Something happens when I call your name. 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 Oh, call the name of Jesus. Mountains move when I call your name. Mountains move when I call your name. Mountains move when I call your name. Something happens when I call your name. Mountains move when I call your name. Mountains move when I call your name. Mountains move when I call your name. Something happens when I call your name. Oh, there's power in the name. Chains are loose when I call your name. Chains are loose when I call your name. Chains are loose when I call your name. Something happens when I call your name. Chains are loose when I call your name. Chains are loose when I call your name. Chains are loose when I call your name. Something happens when I call We break through when we call your name. We break through when we call your name. We break through when we call your name. Something happens when I call your name. We break through when we call your name. We break through when we call your name. We break through when we call your name. Something happens when I call your name. Mountains move. Oh, chains are loose. We break through. Something happens when we call your name. Mountains move. Chains are loose. We break through. Mountains move. Chains are loose. We break through. Mountains move, chains are loose, we break through. Oh, call the name of Jesus. Mountains move, chains are loose, we break through. We break through, we break through. We break through, 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 we break through. Hallelujah! There's a breakthrough in the name of Jesus. 
Jesus. The breakthrough comes in his name alone. Ah, there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Thinking about the Israelites around the walls of Jericho. They walked around it once a day for six days. On the seventh day, they walked around, kept their peace for six times. Man, that took some patience. I don't know how big Jericho was. But on the seventh time, he said, begin to worship and shout. Begin to make music and give praise to the king. Not for what he's already done, but for what he's going to do. I don't know if they envision the walls falling when they begin to praise. But I just got a message for you tonight. Well, don't wait till the battle is over. Don't wait till the victory's won. Just remember whatever God promised. It's yours and it's already done. So don't wait, don't wait, shall now. Oh, yes. Oh, shall now, shall now, shall now. Don't wait. Don't wait, shall now. Oh, shall now, shall now, shall now. Oh, yeah, shall now, shall now, shall now. Don't wait, don't wait, shall now. Now, if you're sick in your body, the doctor says you won't get well. Oh, don't you fret, don't you worry. Cause Jesus, he never fails. So don't wait, don't wait. Shall now, shall now, shall now, shall now. Oh, shall now, shall now, shall now. Don't wait. Don't wait, shout now. God's not slack concerned his promise. He'll do what he said he would do. Whatever he's done for others, 
I know he'll do the same for you. Don't wait, don't wait. Shout now. Shout now. Shout now. Shout now. Oh, oh, oh shout now. Don't wait, shout now. Clap your hands, stomp your feet, leap for joy, do your dance. Some will run, some will rise. Raise your hands and lift him high. Don't wait, don't wait, shout now. Clap your hands, stomp your feet, leap for joy, do your dance. Some will run, some will cry. Raise your hands and lift him high. Don't wait, don't wait, shout now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout now, shout now, shout now, shout now, shout now. Oh, don't wait, don't wait, shout now. Hallelujah. Oh, worship the King. Clap your hands and praise Him with the voice of triumph. With the voice of praise today. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Something about when we learn to praise in the midst of it. When we learn to give him praise ahead of time, before he even completes the work that we're looking for him to do. Amen, amen, amen. While we're standing, we'll take a couple of requests to the Lord in prayer. Brother Dentler is ill, having some serious medical issues that are bringing a lot of concern to them. Brother Brent is asking prayer for his father and for himself. Let's pray that God would put his grace upon him. Help him to know where he leans upon, where he needs to lean in the midst of all of this. Sister Yolanda's out very sick tonight. Let's ask the Lord to give her a healing in her body. Amen. We serve a mighty big God. There's nothing that he cannot do. There's nothing withheld from him. He can do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Any other requests tonight, just lift it up of your hands. Let's talk to the Lord for a moment. I love you, Jesus. I'm so confident in you, God. I know that when we come and we ask that you'll hear us. We know, Lord, that you'll answer, that you'll help. God, we know that when we turn to you, you've got the answer. And so we turn tonight, Jesus. Ask any Lord to touch Elder Dentler. Put your hand upon him and his body. The illness, God, you know, we're asking you to put your hand on it, Jesus. Touch Brother Brent, Lord. Give him your grace. Give him your kindness, Lord. Asking you to heal Sister Yolanda and her body. Those that are out sick tonight, those that are in need of a touch tonight, that have reached out their hands to you, Jesus. Would you see, would you hear the cry and answer tonight, Lord? We thank you for it. We bless you for it. We love you tonight, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated tonight as the usher comes. BBS. That's this Friday through Sunday, July 29th through the 31st. School supply drive. There's bins in the Sunday school classroom. Anything you can find. Dollar stores, Walmarts, whatever you can find. Reach out to Sister Ruby. She probably has a good idea of the things that we need and can use. Let's get that here and uh, help these kids. It's the highlight, no doubt, of their summer to spend more time here in the church. Uh, we're going to be setting up Wednesday and Thursday this week. And in light of that, service this week, midweek service, 
will be Tuesday. Everybody say Tuesday. Tuesday. If you're listening at home on YouTube, say Tuesday. At 7.30 p.m., service will start on Tuesday this week due to VBS. Back to school rally in Yucaipa, August the 19th. If you're interested and want to take your kids, go yourself. ILC is having the Judah Effect Workshop. I've been to this. It's incredible. I know our pastors taught at it several times, and some of the folks that they have there are incredibly talented and, more importantly, anointed musicians. It really helps when you have the anointing. Uh, some of us lack the talent, so we just ask God to give us a whole lot more anointing to make up for the talent that's not there. But looking forward to that September 16th and 17th. If you have any interest in music, it would be a good thing to attend. Amen, amen, amen. We got midweek service this week. Sister Walker, thank you to the young people and the families uh, who helped out cleaning this morning. Remember to pray throughout the week. We can never pray enough. We never pray enough. And in the times that we want to see revival and see God work, we got to give it a little bit more. Go a little bit further. Noticed, have you, has anybody else noticed altar calls going a little bit longer? Has anybody else noticed God's lingering and helping us and as people linger, he continues? If we want to see that more, we want to see the souls that he's going to bring in and the harvest and the revival he's got. We need to put in that effort and I'm looking forward to spending much time down here in prayer. Come to the house of God if you can, if you're able. Let's pray in Jesus' name. Pray for the offering tonight. Send a revival. I will keep praying. I will keep fasting until it comes. Send it to every nation. I'll keep believing. I'll keep interceding until it's done. Lord, send a revival. I will keep praying. I will keep fasting until it comes. Send it to every nation. I'll keep believing. I'll keep interceding until it's done. Pour it out, God. Pour it out, God. We're ready. We're ready. Pour it out, God. Pour it out, God. We're ready. We're ready. Pour it out, God. Pour it out, God. Send down the harvest. I will keep praying. I will keep fasting until it comes. Pour it over my city. Oh, I'll keep interceding until it's time. Lord, send down a harvest. I will keep praying. I will keep fasting until it comes. Pour it over my city. I'll keep believing. I'll keep interceding until it's done. Pour it out, God. Pour it out, God. We're ready. We're ready. Pour it out, God. Oh, pour it out.
out, God. Pour it out, God. We're ready. We're ready. Pour it out, God. Pour it out, God. We're ready. We're ready. Pour it over my family. fresh outpouring. We need a fresh outpouring. Unleash a fresh outpouring. We need a fresh outpouring. Unleash a fresh outpouring. Oh, how many want our pouring tonight? Oh, we need a fresh outpouring. Unleash a fresh outpouring. We need a fresh. We need a fresh outpouring, God. Unleash a fresh outpouring. Lord, we need. Holy Ghost, God can fill you right now. If you need a renewing, God can fill you right now. Oh, if you're listening online, God can touch you right now in your home. If you're sick in your body, God can touch you. Oh, Santa God pray to you speak in tongues. Renewing is yours. A fresh outpouring is yours tonight. Get all God has for you.
Lord, send a revival. I will keep praying. I will keep fasting until it comes. Send it to every nation. I'll keep believing. I'll keep interceding until it's done. Hope that's it. Reach out and touch the Lord right now. While he may be found, call upon his name. He is a very present help in time of trouble. He's our hope. He's our refuge. He's our strength. He's my peace. Oh, he's my renewing. We need it. We need it, God. We need it, God. I wonder if there's someone who could lift up their voice and cry unto God and say, God, we need an outpouring. We need a fresh outpouring. Hallelujah. We need a fresh outpouring. Hallelujah. Oh, that baptism tank needs to be filled again. I know we've baptized other this year, but it's time for a fresh outpouring. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. He He There are souls and lives dependent on this church. Hallelujah. There's lives dependent on us right now. There's lives dependent on me touching God right now. He in a moment but God's walked into this room God's walked into this place God's walked into this house to give us fresh renewing fresh outpouring fresh touch of the Holy Ghost oh. hallelujah young person pray in the Holy Ghost the young person pray in the Holy Ghost pray in tongues pray as the Spirit gives the utterance That's it. Let the Holy Ghost give the utterance. Let the Spirit of God touch you. Oh. Pray for your family members. Pray for backsliders. Fresh outpouring, Lord, and least a fresh outpouring. We need a fresh outpouring, unleash a fresh. 
of Jesus, loosing shackles, loosing chains of addiction, bondage that has people bound, chains of false doctrines, chains of heresies, chains that keep people from getting what they need from God. Oh, church, he's dependent on us tonight. We're his hands, we're his feet, we're his voice. renewing. Pray for restoration. Pray for reconciliation. Pray for outpouring. We need it, God. We need it, God. We're a city set on a hill which cannot be hid. this week but I need it all over again I may be tired in my body but I need to be renewed in my spirit the heaviness. Pray God pushes back the darkness. Pray God allows us to take dominion by the Holy Ghost. I'll keep believing, I'll keep interceding, 
until it's done. Until we see it. Until we see God have the God have the preeminence. Hallelujah. received a divine visitation of the Holy Ghost here tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for what I feel in the house of God. I'm thankful for what I feel. You know, a couple services ago, I said, God's taken us higher. He's taken us deeper. God's taken us to the next step as a church, and I want to walk right with him. I want God to lead me to wherever he has for us, wherever this in this city, wherever God wants us to evangelize, wherever the hungry people are, God, I want you to lead me to them so that I can be a blessing, so we can be a light. Hallelujah. I believe God wants to deliver drug addicts in this place. I believe that, that this church needs to see chains fall off of people in this altar in the spirit. People come up and place their cigarette packs on the altar and say, God, I don't need this anymore. Completely repenting of everything that they're doing, uh, defiling the temple of the Most High God. We need to see it. Uh, hallelujah. We need to see it by the power of the Holy Ghost. People delivered from addictions uh, to drugs and to alcohol and all manner of filth in this world. We need to see it, God. We need to see it, God. We need to see it in this place. And I pray, God, send them to us. Send them to us. Us. Let this church be a hope. Uh, let this church be a light. Let this place uh, be a hospital, God, where people's lives can be put back together, uh, where lives can be restored by the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. And God's looking to us. It's his hands, his feet, his voice to respond to the call of God. He's calling. He's calling. I know many services, even at this church, and many services we heard this week, God's calling. If we tune our ear into it and say, God, I'm willing to respond to the call of God. I'm willing to respond. Everybody is called. The Bible says many are called. Many are called. Now, at what capacity in which we'll operate is according to what, God's give, what God has given us. But every one of us are called to do a work for God in the kingdom. And it's up to us as to whether we're willing to say, God, I completely surrender to your calling. Whatever your plan is, whatever your purpose is for my life, God, I'm willing to do it with all my heart. I'm going to direct our attention to the book of Nehemiah tonight. Amen. I feel to preach. I'm not going to preach very long. I know sometimes that's viewed as an empty promise, but I really don't plan on, on, on t preaching very long here tonight. But I feel like God's given me a word for where we are. God's given us a word for our church. Amen. If we will allow God to challenge us, to strengthen us, I believe that God wants to use you. I could picture in my mind some people right now, I can see you across the table with a Bible study chart teaching a young person a Bible study. I could see you reaching and saying, hey, there's more to life than what you're doing right now. There's hope beyond there's eternal life through Jesus Christ by the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I wonder if someone could respond to the call tonight and say, God, I want to be used by you. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse number 15. The Bible says, And it came to pass, when our enemies heard 
that was known unto us, and God had brought their counsel to naught or to nothing, that we returned all of us to the wall, every one of us unto his work. Everyone say work. It came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the work, and the other half of them held both the spears and the shields and the bows and the habergeons, and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. And they which builded the wall, and they that bear burdens, and those that laden, and every one with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. For the builders, every one had his sword girded by his side, and so builded. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me. There's a whole lot packed up in that statement right there. The sounder of the trumpet was by me. And I said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, the work is great and large. We are separated upon the wall, one far from another. In what place therefore ye hear the sound of the trumpet, resort ye thither unto us, and our God shall fight for us. So we labored in the work, and half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared. Likewise at the same time I said unto the people, let every one of uh, every one with his servant lodge within Jerusalem, that in the night they may be guard to us and labor on the day. So neither I nor my brethren nor my servants nor the men of the guard which followed me, none of us put off our clothes, saving that every one of us put them off for washing. They stayed in a continual state of readiness. For the next little bit, with the help of the Lord, I'm going to preach on swords and trowels swords and trowels. I wonder if we could ask that God would touch us. His spirit is here in such a beautiful way here tonight. God, I worship you. God, I worship you. I'm thankful for the divine visitation of the Holy Ghost that we feel in this place. I pray that you would help us. I pray that you would strengthen us, God. I pray that you would equip our hands to do the work of God. Equip our minds and our spirits. Equip our bodies, God, with strength and grace to do your will. God, I can't do this by myself. I'm powerless without you. I'm powerless without the anointing of God, without the favor of God, without the hand of God. I need you, Jesus, every step of the day, God. It's a great work. There's so much work to do, God. I can't do it without you fighting for us. But, God, I'm going to be equipped with the things that I need need to do the work of God and I pray that you would place it in our hands tonight to do your precious work I wonder if we could clap our hands unto him before we're seated tonight I wonder if we could lift our voices unto him God has victory God has revival God has outpouring for this church in this city I'm believing I'm strengthening myself I'm encouraging myself in the Lord tonight because God has something great the best days of this church are ahead of us. And I believe that God has a plan and a purpose for us in Jesus' name. And that God bless you for standing. You may be seated. I had planned on hearing from some of our young people tonight. But uh, the way service went, be prepared Tuesday night to give a quick word about how God blessed you and touched you. I know I'm making you nervous now, and you're going to think about this all day, all day tomorrow, and all day Tuesday till you're here on Tuesday night for service. But I, I want to hear what God's done. So rather than me just springing it on you, you got some time to think about what God did for you this past week at Peak. And it's good to see our dear friend, Sister Lauren DaCosta. We love her very, very much. She's been connected to this church, connected to our family for many, many years. I love her family, her brother, and her parents, and we're glad to see you in the house of God tonight. Amen. What we've gone through as the people of God and hearing the Word of God, if we don't apply the Word of God, then it's merely inspiration. It's merely emotionalism. If we don't put legs to the Word of God that He's given unto us, then it merely dies at the doorstep of, uh, of good inspiration. It dies at the threshold 
of good intentions and good motivations. But when we take the word of God and we start to put it into action, we understand, God, I don't want to just be a hearer of the word only, but I want to be a doer of the word. He says, my word will not return void, but it's going to accomplish that which it was sent to do. God's word will be accomplished one way or the other because his word is sure. His word is steadfast. His word is sovereign. His word is absolute. His word will stand the test of time. It's been here from eternity past, and it's going to be here for eternity future. You cannot separate God from his word, and when he gives his word, it will be accomplished. So will it be, because it will not return void. God's going to find someone willing to do the work of God. God's going to find someone willing to spend themselves as currency in the kingdom of God. God's willing to, to, to find someone who's willing to sacrifice and get under the shoulder of a burden for the kingdom of God and saying, God, we don't have a day to waste. We don't have time to waste because there's a lost and dying world out there and we've got to see you do a work, God. Use me. Use my hands. Use my feet. Use my voice, God. Here am I. Send me. We need to capture the attention of God. If we got to say, God, send me. It's me, oh Lord. I want to be used by you. Hallelujah. God's word to Solomon at the dedication of the temple in Jerusalem, the first temple, remains true with us today. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. We've got to go back to a place of prayer. I know we've been talking a lot about prayer here lately in our services, but we've got to have a a spirit of prayer. Uh, throughout the week, I've got to continually uh, abide in the presence and the spirit uh, of prayer and in the presence of God. Prayer is our first line of both offense and defense against the enemy. Prayer is the way that yokes are destroyed and bonds are loosed. Prayer is the way that our supplications are made known unto God. He says, you have not because you ask not, but ask and ye shall find. Seek, or ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. God, what's not being accomplished in my world because I'm not willing to to find a place and to humble myself and to pray and to seek after you. This city needs this church. This city's depending on this church. The city leaders in this in the, the city leaders in this city of El Mirage and Surprise don't even realize what a force is to be contended with in this church. And it's not because of us. It's not because of anything good that we've done, but it's the Spirit of God that we feel in this house. It's the Spirit of God that's resident in this place. Even right now, while I'm preaching, you can feel it. You can feel it the minute you walk in here. You can feel it the minute you go to prayer. You can feel it the minute we start singing and start worshiping and calling upon the name of the Lord. And I don't ever want to take for granted what God is doing. I don't ever want to take this for granted because he is near unto those that call upon his name hallelujah prayer is the answer prayer is the answer young person learn how to pray in the holy ghost not just at peak not just when everybody else around you is doing it not when just the music's just right but god to learn how to find a place of prayer where I can lay before the Lord and cry hot tears into the carpet and pray prayers of supplication, prayers of intercession, prayers that reach the throne room of God and cause God's ear to be inclined unto my voice and unto my prayer. Young people, learn how to fall in love with a prayer life. Learn how to fall in love with talking to God. Whether you're doing schoolwork or doing dishes for mom, you 
got to learn how to call upon the name of the Lord to continually be in a state of prayer without ceasing because it is our weapon of war against the enemy. It's going to protect us. It's going to enshroud us. It's going to keep us. It's going to keep our hearts and our spirits humble. It's going to keep the, the, the flesh at, at bay and it's going to allow us to take up our cross on a day-to-day -day basis. Why? Because we're having a relationship with the God of the Word. Prayer. Prayer. Prayer is the answer today. And if you've never experienced intercessory prayer, God can take you to that place. God can take you to a place where he can touch you, where the spirit makes intercession with groanings which cannot be uttered, where God can use you to pray for the lost of this city, to pray for situations among us that we may not have any knowledge of because prayer is the answer. Prayer is the key. Prayer is what's going to take us to the next level as a church. It's not going to be trite programs and pretty music, but it's going to be prayer and the preaching of the word. It's going to be prayer and seeking after God. I know I'm driving this point home tonight, but God help us to be a people of prayer that learn how to call upon the name of the Lord and to seek after you with all of our hearts. Hallelujah. 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 Young person, God wants to use you in prayer. God wants to use your voice. God wants to use the voice of your supplication to touch the throne room of God. Don't wait for mom and dad to pray prayers for you. Learn how to pray those prayers for yourself. Learn how to fall in love with prayer because you don't want to fall into the snare of the enemy. As we're getting older, there's more that's going to come against us and more that's going to vie for our time and for our lusts and for our pleasure and for our emotion and for our attention. But we've got to understand God the older I get, the more I've got to fall in love with prayer. But the older I get, the less time I have, the more responsibility I have, the more accountability I have. Prayer sometimes is hard. You got to schedule it in and you got to make time for it because from the time you get up to the time you go to bed, mama, you got things on the list. And dad, things are pulling at you from work and pulling at you from the family and we've got responsibility. Young people learn how to fall in love with prayer, with seeking after God, letting your voice be lifted unto God, learning how to pray till a river flows from the depths of your spirit, pray until a river of the Holy Ghost flows from the depths of your heart, from the bottom of your spirit, with everything that's in you, I've got to pray and I've got to seek after God with everything that's in me. I wonder if we could call upon the name of the Lord. I got more to preach here tonight, but I feel like God is challenging us to prayer. God is leading us to prayer. God is leading us to a place where he wants to use us as his voice to pray with groanings which cannot be uttered as the spirit itself maketh intercession. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I pray that God raises up we may talk about this more at youth service. Some Nehemiahs in our generation. Men of standard, men of courage, men of vision, men of faith, men that face unforeseen and immense obstacles and are still willing to overcome those things. I pray God raises up some Esters in our generation. It says, it doesn't matter what happens. If I perish, I perish. Mordecai, you told her, what if God's calling you just for a time such as this? I know the world is broken and crazy as we talked about this morning, but what if God's calling you, saint of God? What if God's calling you, Sister Sophia? What if God's calling you, Sister Leilania? What if God's calling you to be the person God is raising up for such a time as this? We need to get out of the notion that says, well, that's for somebody else more qualified and more important than me to do that type of work. That's going to be someone that, that, that's got more 
skills and ability and more equipped to do that. No, God's waiting on a little orphan girl named Esther who was adopted by her uncle or cousin to do the work of God. It wasn't an ideal situation. Daniel, you were led into captivity. These were young men. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. These weren't aged men. These were young men taken from their very land into captivity. Their names and their identity completely stripped from them. And yet they still did the work of God. Jeremiah, I know you were a teenager when you started becoming the weeping prophet. And you didn't have a very pretty message to preach. And you couldn't stop crying all day. And yet God used you to be a mighty prophet in Israel. Hallelujah. I pray God raise up some people of standard. Some people who are willing to respond to the call of God. God's equipped you. God's blessed you. God's hand is on you. But it's up to us as to whether we're willing to say, God, I'm willing to respond to the call. God raise up some Nehemiahs in our generation. Nehemiah is a story that stands the test of time. It was a story for that time, and it's a story for our time and our generation. The people of Israel had been led into what is known as exile. The nation was defeated, and all of its leaders were carried off into captivity in another land. It turned out to be most, one of the most transforming eras of the life of Israel. Everything that they had known before lay in the ashes of what once was. Everything that they had known up to that point and possibly even taken for granted was now lying in ruins as they're led into captivity. Deep questions are asked during this time. They're leading to hope, confidence, faith, and ultimately into God's unshakable covenant that he made with his people. His promises that were yea and they were amen and the love of God that he had for his people. You see, he didn't punish his people to destroy them, but he punished his people to draw them back to a place of relationship. Anytime God does something in your life, anytime God takes us to a place of brokenness, anytime God allows things to happen in our lives, it's God reaching for us for relationship when our world starts crumbling apart it's not us shaking our fist at God saying God why are you letting this happen to me no it's God leading us back to relationship it's God leading us back to a place saying saying to God I want I miss my time with you I miss our relationship I miss those moments in prayer prayer is a two way street it's not just me making all my complaints known unto God no it's God ministering to me in those settings it's God speaking to me People like Nehemiah answered the call in seeming impossible situations and circumstances. Nehemiah stood in the gap for the people of God. Nehemiah's response to the disgrace of Jerusalem's decay remains a model for us as the people of God to follow. Prayer, action, not just hearing, not just being inspired, not just possessing vision but putting something that's a dream and a vision into action. Because of Nehemiah's vision in response to the will and the word of God, we understand there were great things that were accomplished as a result of a man's dedication and commitment to the will of God. As we look through this, and we're not going to get through all this tonight, I imagine we're going to spend a couple of lessons here on this over the next couple of weeks. I feel God leading us in this vein I feel God leading us. If I had it today, if I could have made it to the hardware store, I would have bought a bunch of swords and trowels to give out to you guys. Maybe by the end of this, we'll get some on order so that we can have some because I want God to place a sword in one hand tonight and I want him to place a trowel in the other hand. I want God to place some tools in our hands so that we can do the work of God because it's about rebuilding the wall. 
It's about rebuilding broken lives. It's about putting lives back together in this place. It's about, again, going down into the wash where lives are completely destroyed and broken minds are gone. People have completely sold themselves over to the enemy and to sin for us to reach into the fire and to pull them out and say, God, you did it for us. You did it for me. You put my life back together. You saved my mom. You saved my dad. You saved my brother and my sister. You saved my family member, God. You delivered my mom of addiction. You delivered my dad of alcohol, God. You delivered. And I believe that God wants to do it all over again. God wants to do it all over again. I just say, God, use us as the hands and the feet to walk out into the city and to start rebuilding some walls, to rebuild some places that have been torn down, to put some restoration in lives that have been broken apart. It's a great work. And when you stop and look at it from the outside in, it seems overwhelming. It seems like God, and I've even asked myself in prayer this week, God, I don't know how it's going to happen. And I know I'm being vulnerable with you all tonight. I pray, God, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know a God that's going to help us to make it happen. I know a God that's going to equip us to make it happen. We were triple parked last week, uh, Sunday morning. We didn't have another room for probably another car in this parking lot. You can correct me if I'm wrong, Brother Demas. Uh, People were here under the inspiration and the power of God as the presence of God was moving in this place. Uh, And I pray God put a sword in one hand and help us to put a trowel in the other hand. Uh, Yes, it takes work. Uh, It takes us doing physical work, uh, but it also takes us doing spiritual work uh, in the kingdom of God. It's keeping that trowel ready to do the work of building the wall but also protecting ourselves from the enemy that wants to beset us that wants to lure and entice us off the wall I pray, God, let it be the balance of work in the kingdom and fighting the good fight of faith I'm not going to go out and pick fights with the enemy we heard it this week David didn't go look for bears and lions to slay he looked for sheep to protect you try to pick a fight with the enemy and you don't have God on your side fighting that battle for you? Brother, sister, I pray for you in that fight. It's not up for us to go out and just start jamming uh, sticks in the eyes of those. Uh, it's not for us just looking uh, uh, for a fight and trying to pick a fight. Uh, but I'm telling you, when the fight comes to us, we've got to understand we cannot afford to lose one single sheep uh, amongst the flock. God, put some tenacity in us. Uh, put a fight in us. Uh, put something in us that says, God, I'm willing to work by day and protect by night. Uh, I'm willing to protect by day and to work by night, God. The only time I'm going to take the clothes off is for they're they're in the washer machine. Then I'm going to put them back on and I'm going to continue to do the work of God because there is no discharge from building this wall. There's no discharge from the will of God. There's no sabbatical from obeying the will and the purpose of God. I believe in Sabbath. and We'll get into this at some point. The Lord rested on the seventh day. What makes us think we can do it without the way doing it the way God did it? If God needed to rest, and we know God has all power in heaven and earth, he was giving us something as a model to follow. So I'm not discounting our need here, but as we're doing the work of God, we have to understand that the orders he's given us the commission that he's given us, we've got to follow it with all of our hearts. Beyond inspiration, beyond just hearing, beyond just emotion, and saying, God, I'm taking back everything I've heard, and I'm going to put it into action. If you need Bible studies, I'll order them for you. You tell me tonight, I'll get them on order this week. If you want to teach a Bible study, you've never taught one before, let me know. I'll equip you with whatever you need to do the work of God. If you need a trowel, I'll get some trowels on order. If you need a sword, I'll get some swords on order. We're going to equip the people of God with a sword in one hand and a trowel in the other to do the work of God. Don't say, hey, my trowel's broken. No, I'll bring you a new one. Stay on the wall. Stay right there. Let someone protect you. I'm going to run you another tool to be able to work with. Uh, My sword is a little bent and it's a little out of shape. Uh, I'll bring you another 
another one or it's time to maybe sharpen and to clean the sword to do the will and the work of God. I wonder if there's some people under the sound of my voice that are willing to rise to the occasion and say, God, I want you to use me. I want you to use me for your kingdom and for your glory. I want to, I want you to use me, God. You're challenging me. You're calling me. God, I pray that you would help us to be obedient to the will and to the work of God, to see the disgrace of our city, to see the bondage of our city, to see those who are wallowing in the sin that has them so bound, and to say there's hope, there's forgiveness, there's restoration, there's something more than than you're living in right now, and it's at a place where you can feel the presence of God. Hallelujah. Prayer, fasting, rebuilding. These are the central themes of the book of Nehemiah. Prayer, fasting, and rebuilding. Taking worn out, run over, misused, abused, rubble. As he prophesied in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 4, and they shall build the old waste places. They shall rise up. The former desolations. They shall repair the waste cities and the desolation of many generations. I know it looks destroyed right now. I know that's a rough area of town. I know that's a place where you don't even want to go in by yourself. I I know at night it's not a place you want to even go by yourself. But I'm telling you, as we start to rebuild the wall, there is going to be a divine lift in this city. As we continue to take dominion in the spirit, there's going to be a divine lift in this city. The mayor of this city doesn't know us yet, but at some point they're going to know who we are. Why? Because God knows how to do it, and it's not because of us, but because God knows how to take a place and to take an area and to lift it as a result of the power of God and us taking a hammer and taking a trowel and taking a sword in our hand and saying, God, you can count on me. You can count on me. I know it's day and night work, God. I know it's from the morning until the evening, and now we've got to do it all night because we've got to make sure the enemy doesn't try to slip in and thwart what God is doing. Hallelujah. Shields, bows, armor. In one hand, they wrought the work, and in the other hand, they fought the fight. In one hand, they had the sword that was girded by their side, And in one hand they built. The Bible says that he that sounded the trumpet, the watchman, the one looking was close by. I pray, God, I want the watchman to be close by. I want someone that's willing to sound the trumpet in my life if there's danger ahead. And I pray, God, help me as the pastor of this church to be a sounder of the trumpet, to be nearby just in case there's someone working a little further down on the wall. They need to know. They need to hear. They need to understand. We need to be ready to protect what we're doing, what God is doing. It's spiritual work. It's physical work. We have to understand the importance of both and the proportion of both. And so Nehemiah responded to the call of God. He responded to the voice of God. He responded to that gentle nudging. It didn't shove him. He didn't feel his arm twist behind his back and get pushed through a door. No, sometimes the way God speaks is just a gentle nudging in the spirit. That first voice you hear is God. The second voice you hear sometimes is yourself trying to talk you out of it or the enemy trying to talk you out of it. And I pray tonight, there's a call going forth. There's a call going forth. You can see it in the spirit. 
There's boxes of trowels. There's boxes of swords laying across the front of this altar area. I wonder if there's some people who are willing to step out. Walk down here. If you have to, lean down and stoop and pick them up. And say, God, you can count on me. You can count on me. Is there someone willing to respond to the call of God tonight? I want it to be more than inspiration. I want it to be more than just emotion. But God, I want to be willing to do the work of God with my hands. Put a sword in one hand and a trowel in the other. God, I'm willing. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. I'm going to be what you've called me to be, God. I'm going to respond to the call. I'm going to respond to the call. Say to God, it's not too late to get involved in the work of God. It's not too late. Life, it's not too late to be used by God for the kingdom of God, for the purpose of the kingdom. And I realize we're working, we're laboring. God wants to equip us by the power of the Holy Ghost to continue to rebuild the old waste places, to repair the places of desolation, the places that have been torn down. The places that have been neglected, worn over, the people everybody else has given up on, the families and the homes that are chaotic and a wreck because they've just been completely neglected, people that feel utter hopelessness in our city. God, help me to help rebuild those waste places. God's calling. God's nudging tonight. Hallelujah. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? I want to do more, God. I want to do more for the kingdom. I'm, I'm not tired of just sitting on the sidelines, God. I want to jump right in. Give me a hammer. Give me a trowel. Give me a sword. I want to get involved in what God is building. I want to get involved in what's being built in this city. I want to be used by you, God. I want to be a willing vessel, a vessel you can use. I want. 